You're with Mike Van Acker on ABC Radio, Brisbane and Queensland. Uh, good afternoon to you. We've asked the question, <laughs> I'm sure you've heard by now, but if you haven't, if you've just joined us, there's been a fracas at the Oscars. Uh, Will Smith has gone on stage, taken a bit of a swing at Chris Rock because Chris Rock said something insensitive and rude about Will Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. And it's going on. I asked the question. I've asked the question, was it the right thing for Will Smith to do to get up and defend what he, he I'm sure, thinks he was defending his lady's honour? Uh, was it the right thing to do? I've had dissenting voices and pro voices, people saying, yes, absolutely, he did the right thing, good on him. I've also had uh, people call in and go, well, you know what? That was an opportunity to model better behaviour to our young people and, and I do tend to agree with all of that too. A couple more texts. Uh, Mark from Upper Coomera says, Mike, don't agree with physical nature but Will Smith was right. This is a major part of what is wrong. The slur is public and the correction is muted. Needs More needs to be called out publicly. Yeah, take your point, Mark. Um, Jason says, when people don't have to worry about a punch to the face or violence generally, then their behaviour gets worse. You can see this in all... All of society, especially on public transport, no one is worried about being smacked in the face for extremely bad behaviour. Um, okay, yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying, Jason. A little bit extreme, but I hear you. Um, that looks like, I don't know if it's a different Jason, but someone has texted and said, I'm not sure what occurred with the Oscars and Will Smith and what was said or done, but I think there's probably more to it. I had that conversation with uh, Kat Davidson, who's uh, the producer of this program this afternoon, or, or one of them, uh, and I wondered if there's bad blood between them already. Uh, but Jason goes on to say, if anyone insults or abuses your missus, your kids, your family, you defend them, there may be a lot more history to it than the public know. I'm not saying smacking... Um, Someone in the mouth is always right, but it's not always wrong either. All right. All right. Well, let me know your thoughts if you'd like to. Zero four six seven nine double two six twelve. I'm happy to, I don't know, I'm happy to take that on board and, and just gauge some opinions on that because I genuinely don't know how I feel about it. Um, I see both sides. Having said that, <laughs> Oscars are supposed to be happy um, and that's quite an ugly scene. And there is some ugly stuff on the news these days. You know, well, these days. Geez, I feel like there has been for literally years now. But at the moment, there's some, some bad stuff. There's the, the war in Ukraine. Uh, closer to home, there's the Hannah Clark inquest, which is horrific, but also an important story we all need to hear about. And as a father of a young man, my boy Jake is, is 18 going on 19, I kind of feel a responsibility to teaching him, be teaching him the right thing and therefore I need to be informed for all of that. But prior to those two things, there were the floods only a month ago. There's, there's been the, the Rona for a couple of years now, the COVID-19 and the list goes on. And I feel like we all walk the line between being informed and taking on too much of it. And where is that line? How do you draw it? And Dr. Rachel Hannam is from North Brisbane Psychologist. Good afternoon, Rachel. Oh, hang on. Let's try hitting that button. Good afternoon, Rachel. Hi, Mike. How are you going? Very well. Now, is it possible to be traumatised by events that we weren't actually involved with but we just see it in the news or hear about it in the news? Yes, it is. And in psychology, we call that secondary traumatic stress or also called vicarious trauma. Yes. Okay. It's just, it seems to me like there must be a lot of people exposed, and not just the, in the media, but um, in other in other professions as well. The... Yeah, well, the term vicarious trauma has come out of um, research that's looked at helping professionals, mental health professionals, emergency service workers who attend, um, you know, crime scenes, disaster scenes, and also deal with the psychological fallout of the young people involved afterwards. So we know that, you know, there are many helping professionals who do experience vicarious trauma, but there's some more recent research that shows members of the general public can experience secondary trauma or vicarious trauma from um, consuming, um, you know, very distressing news material and articles. Yeah. Well, there has been some stuff, you know. I've seen some very disturbing footage on the news lately um, Mm. Ukraine, Hannah Clark, uh, all of these things. And, and I feel like it's kind of my yeah. responsibility as, as a citizen of the world to be aware of what's going on and to be watching. But at the same time, I do wonder sometimes if, it, if it's good for me, you know? Yeah. Well, you made reference to, and you might have seen the funny meme that has gone around for years on social media saying, you know, today I'm struggling with the desire to stay informed 
and the desire to to keep my sanity, you know, that fine line yeah. between, yeah, staying informed uh, and looking after your mental health at the same time. You mentioned before, Mike, that there's always been violence in the world, uh, and that is true. In fact, some research suggests that the amount of violence has decreased in the Western world over recent decades, and yet we're more and more exposed to it because of the internet than ever before. Okay. And what are the signs yeah. we should look for to know if we're not processing all of this difficult news in a healthy way? Is there a warning that we can see in ourselves? Mm. Yeah, so some of the signs of, of vicarious trauma are difficulty sleeping, uh, increased heart rate, uh, and other physiological signs and symptoms of stress, perhaps shakiness, trembling, difficulty concentrating, uh, lapses of memory, um, perhaps not taking pleasure or enjoyment out of activities that you used to find um, enjoyable, and also just some of those mild post-traumatic stress um, symptoms that people experience, such as nightmares, um, flash forwards, which are similar to flashbacks, but you know we have images of things happening in the future to us or our loved ones, uh, and so much of what is the um, at that heart of vicarious trauma is that people visualise what they hear about and read about. And one of my supervisors in the past advised me as a therapist when I'm hearing graphic and distressing stories to be careful of the images that my mind makes and not to, um, you know, play those images over and over. Like the mind makes movies, right? And those movies in our mind can actually be the thing that causes the post-traumatic stress reaction. It's in our imagination and it's replaying over and over and it doesn't help anyone we might feel like we're helping in some way if we worry um, and yet of course it doesn't help the people who've been through it we don't know exactly what they went through so it is important that we manage um, our own mind and our own stress because we can obviously be a lot more helpful to people in terms of what we can control if we're not vicariously traumatized ourselves i've wondered about that in the past um rachel uh where we're psychologists and mental health advocates and even first responders, AMBOs and those things that must see yeah. some horrific things. I wondered how you protect yourselves mentally. Uh, I guess it must just be a, a version of what we all need to be doing, but more extreme. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we do need to be in the right state, mental and physical and emotional state, to be doing our job because we're playing a role, whether we're a psychologist or an ambulance officer or a doctor. So we're playing a role and it's an important role that we have to play And then we want to try and get out of that role and out of that state into a different state when we go home from work, switch off. So we do learn various ways to switch off, draw the boundaries between work and home, um, you know, look after ourselves, maybe decrease the amount of news that we consume if we do a, a traumatic job, increase the amount of positive activity in our life, do things to get ourselves grounded um, because, yeah, without those boundaries, Uh, we're not as much help to other people. However, having said that, there are always cases that are going to infiltrate our psyche um, and therefore psychologists, uh, emergency responders, social workers, these kind of professionals usually have their own supervisors so that they can go and speak um, about those cases that do linger in their consciousness and do really get to them because we're all human after all. And we all have a heart, hopefully, and sometimes our job is going to get to us, so we need to reach out for support. If you've just joined us, my guest is Dr Rachel Hannam, who is the Clinical Director of North Brisbane Psychologists. Rachel, it's one mm-hmm. thing for you or me or any other adult to choose to consume media about perhaps Ukraine or, or a domestic violence situation. It's a whole other thing yeah. for our children to be exposed to it too, and sometimes yeah. inadvertently or accidentally. Um, yeah. Can it be particularly harmful for kids? Yeah, I, I really think any parents listening do need to be careful about what their kids are seeing on the news. I often say a child's brain cannot make an adult interpretation. So children will interpret things in more extreme ways, unbalanced ways. Um, they don't understand. Uh, depending on the age of the child, we can start to talk about some things because we can't completely protect them, though I am advocating we try. Um, I've got teenagers um, and I've talked to them about antisocial personality disorders, that sociopaths and psychopaths exist in the world. It's very rare, but they've always existed. Um, and you know, these are the people who don't have a conscience, who don't have empathy and who are capable of doing horrendous things. 
um, you know, like we saw in the Hannah Clark case, um, and that you know that there's a framework I can give them to understand it. It's still a big thing for them to get their heads around. They're teenagers; they've got to learn. You know, that bad things happen in the world. Um, with younger kids, I want to try and keep them away from it as much as possible. It can cause a lot of fear. It can create nightmares. Um, if they've been exposed to it, of course, a good therapist, a good child psychologist can be um, very helpful. Um, and then, again, we want to, just like with ourselves, we want to balance things up. The world is not all bad. There's plenty of beauty and joy and cooperation still in the world. So we want to bring back that balance when we can as well. Absolutely. Dr. Rachel Hannum from uh, North Brisbane Psychologist, thank you very much for your time today. That's fascinating. And um, I guess uh, we just need to be careful how much we consume and know when enough is enough. Exactly. It's everything's about dosage. We don't want to overdose on the media sometimes. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you so much, Mike. Wow. Okay. Mike Vanak is my name. It's ABC Radio, Brisbane and Queensland. We are one. I was four and a half years of age when they took me off my mother. And at 56, I learned that I was an Aboriginal woman. I started writing at 70. I'll never stop writing and sharing those stories. 90 years of your stories. I am Auntie Ruth. I am Gungri. And I am 92 years young. (laughs) 90 years of the ABC.